The Philippines is an island nation at the far east end of Asia, just as diverse but a lot less known than its neighbors, though sharing many of their traditions with them. One of the few more accessible ways to spot these similarities is by looking at a few traditional games of the country. First, we have a member of the Mangala family of games called Sumka, a strategic game for two players. Each player has a house or bahai and seven fields or taniman whose crops need to be harvested. For this, the player needs to move grains or butil between fields and ultimately bring the harvest to their own house. The player who has the most crops in their own domain wins. Since Sokka is a mathematical game, it's only natural that the word Sokka probably stems from the Malaysian Jongkak, meaning to calculate in your head. Like any other Joe soldier, the Filipinos have their own lighter moments. A favorite pastime is Sipa, a game with a kick in it. This is a photo I took in Shanghai in 2011 of two children playing Sipa, which means to kick, and is known in Vietnamese as Da Cha, and in Chinese as Jian Si, shuttlecock. A very simple game that you can play by yourself or with others. The shuttlecock itself is usually made out of cheap materials like rubber, some metal for weight, and either feathers or plastic strings to give directions. Sipa's bigger brother is this, a competitive team game conventionally called Sepak Takraw, or Kick the Ball, a popular game throughout Southeast Asia, probably originating from the Southeast Asian mainland. Imagine playing football or soccer on a volleyball field with teams of three. You cannot touch the ball with your hand, and it is not allowed to touch the ground either. The ball used to be made out of rattan like here, but because there's a chance of splinters getting into your eye, official tournaments use plastic balls nowadays. The next game should be known to all Microsoft users, it's Mahjong, the 144 tile or card set game from China, usually for 4 players. It's very popular in the country and often seen at social gatherings. Unfortunately, every region has its own rules so it's a bit difficult to talk about. Though we couldn't go into detail here, you may already see hints at a connection the Philippines has to its neighbors. And of course, if you go through the streets of the Philippines, you can see everyone, everywhere playing this, European chess. Not really something traditionally Asian, but still worth mentioning as Filipinos share the passion for this game with every European. And every school, university and even the Southeast Asian games have venues for it. For a hot solo entertainment, the Yo-Yo Stars come forward. This amusement, which swept America as a popular craze a few years ago, is a Filipino invention. Once the gadget is in motion, something pretty close to science steps in. I don't think the Yo-Yo needs any introduction. Nobody knows when or where the Yo-Yo was invented, as it pops up in ancient Greece, China, pre-colonial Philippines, and so on. But one thing's for sure, Pedro Flores, a Filipino expatriate to the USA, patented it in 1929, with the word yo-yo itself probably coming from Ilocano. Though we didn't go into detail here, I hope that you may already see a few hints at a connection between the Philippines and its neighbors. I hope that these pieces of information will help combat the Philippines' cultural amnesia and will motivate people to explore the Philippines' neighbors. We're all Asians. We are a family. I'm Gao Li. Thanks for watching.